Good afternoon and welcome back to the Athlete Biosecure Bubble here at the 2020 Virgin Money London Marathon. And uh, welcome to now our fifth press conference. Uh, today, we are welcoming a former London Marathon champion who recently set the T54 1500 meters world record, Manuela Shah of Switzerland. And joining her on the top table, another former London Marathon champion, multiple Paralympic and IPC medalist, Great Britain's very own Shelley Woods. So welcome to they both. Uh, just a quick reminder, this is a socially distanced virtual press conference. Everyone is here wearing the bump technology uh, to ensure that we keep two meters apart. And that's also why they are sat uh, just over two meters apart on the top table. So before we begin, please can I mention a few housekeeping notes. Uh, please can our media submit their questions into the Zoom chat. Uh, and then I will call upon the media to ask the questions to Manuela and to Shelley. Uh, please keep your camera on throughout and your microphone off, but please obviously turn your microphone on when you are asked to ask your question and then turn it off after. So Manuela and Shelley, we are delighted to have you here at the 2020 Virgin Money London Marathon. Um, first question to Manuela, uh, how has it felt to be preparing the last few days in this biosecure bubble? You know, these days everything is a bit different um, as well here. So um, when we got here, um, you feel really safe. Um, you don't get to socialize as much with other people than you usually do, but um, it's probably the safest place uh, on, on earth right now. Brilliant. And Shelley, a very strange time for everyone, uh, whether they're an athlete or not. But uh, how did you cope with lockdown? Uh, and are you excited to be on the start line uh, for the marathon on Sunday? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's crazy times for everybody, isn't it? And um, lo lockdown for me was it was quite it was quite challenging uh, to start with, um, especially as an athlete trying to train uh, for an event like this. Um, like all our training venues got shut, we had to adapt a lot. Um, I pretty much had to build my own home gym um, and get my setup at home right, and and then find other ways to get out on the road and stuff and you know, following all the guidelines from our government and stuff. But it, it's um, like, it, it, it's been okay. And I'm really excited for Sunday. Um, I think the, the most challenging thing for me was being at home uh, with a little in and us all trying to work from home because um, you're on Zoom and everything. So uh, like everybody around this uh, in the country has, has probably had those challenging times, but it's it's been good fun. And, I'd, and um Although it's been tough, it, it has been good fun, and you, you've got to keep your spirits high. And, and personally, I, it, for me, I, I don't think you'll ever get this time again at home. So um, w although it is, it's not a great situation, we tried to make the most of it and, um, and just, just get on with things. Superb. Um, was it the same for yourself, Manuela, in terms of preparations in Switzerland? Um, what was the access like to facilities uh, during the, the lockdown? Uh, for yourselves, has that um, hindered your preparations at all? Yeah, we had like a six week lockdown in Switzerland and everything was closed, even tracks and, and all the facilities. So um, yeah, we had to improvise a little bit, but I kind of saw it coming. So I was ready at home. I had my rollers at home, my, my, um, my gym, you could say. And um, yeah, it was, not, it was not easy, but it also had, had it good sides. Uh, as Shelley said, you get a lot of time um, just to focus on training, um, you get a lot of time to just do do stuff you never get to do um, normally. Um, you save a lot of time just because you're at home and you don't have to travel that much. So I enjoyed that a lot. And um, I thought it was good training, actually. I felt really strong um, coming out of the lockdown and going back to the, to the track. So um, yeah, crazy times for everyone. How, how many weeks preparation did you have on the track prior to that world record because obviously time away from you know your usual setup your usual track build up um, that must have been a, a very nice surprise to or not surprise but a very nice uh, achievement to break that world record yeah we only had that two track meets uh, in switzerland where we get to race um, it was only in a uh, few people and only on nation uh, national base so um, i really wanted to do well and that was a time i i focused on so i had a few weeks before on track so i was i was optimistic you had a good feeling about uh, the record um, shelly yourself um, in terms of you know a usual you know setup 
Um, you know, would you usually use a track quite a lot in your in your preparations, or you know, does it tend to be you know a lot more on the rollers for uh, you know longer distance race preparation? Yeah, yeah. Although I I don't race on the track anymore, I still train on the track. So um, usually I'm there a couple of days a week, um, and that got obviously got shut. Um, and spend a lot of time on the road. Um, but you just have to adapt and then improvise, like I, I have my rollers at home. Um, and, and in a way, as Manuela was saying, that um, I kind of saw it coming a little bit as well. Um, and me and my husband actually jumped online and we bought some like adjustable dumbbells before we got locked down. And I know everyone's in this country struggling to get fitness equipment, but we were really lucky. Um, so we were able to carry on doing like your strength stuff at home and stuff. So that, that was good. Um, but, but I think also the hardest thing for me was having all the nursery shut. Um, cause I have a little boy now he's, he's three. So it was juggling, you know, that, um, and still being able to get my training done. Um, but you just use the, the time the best you can and you know, everyone's in the same boat. So yeah. <laughs> I think we can go to our media now. I'm gonna throw a question. Uh, I think we've got Jacob Phillips. Jacob, are you there to ask a question? Hi, James. Yes, I am. Hi to both Emanuela and Shelley. You might need to, to turn your you microphone off mute, Jacob, I believe. Am I now off mute now? Is that okay? can't hear you through. I think the question, you've written it down. So uh, how would the new course uh, make it a, a tactical race at the weekend, Manuela? So it's 19 laps. Um, you're both obviously, you're more than accomplished track uh, athletes. Um, how would that impact the way that you race as opposed to a normal big city course that might be one or two loops? That's a good question. I don't know yet because I've never done a, a course with so many laps. It's going to be different, I guess. Um, I definitely gonna miss the long stretches where you can just push, push, push because every turn we have to touch our steering. So that always breaks the rhythm a little bit. So um, I also wonder how it's gonna feel mentally to know that you have to do so many laps. Um, but I'm so happy to be here and I'm so grateful that London Marathon organization organizers um, put so much work in, in putting this together and make it possible for us to, to race. So um, I'm just excited. And the same for yourself, Shelley, is it, will there be a, a kind of plan or, you know, when you start to look at the, the different laps and, uh, and when you might push and, and hold back? Um, I simply don't know. <laughs> I've never raced on a course like this before. Um, for me, um, I, and I, I think it's, I, I'm, I'm just really happy to be here. Um, like this is the first time or the only opportunity we've had to race on the road this year. Um, and it, it's just great that London Marathon have been able to, to make it happen. Um, I wasn't sure anything was gonna happen this year. So, you know, when I, when I heard that um, it, it was gonna go ahead and that it was gonna be on a different course, it doesn't bother me. Like, you know, I, I think it probably, they will have its times where it's gonna be tough, especially having to, to count the laps. And, but we just follow the blue line. So, um, yeah, I think it'll be okay. And I think we've got Ian Archibald, yeah, uh, sorry, Ian Chabban, sorry. Ian, are you there? Yes, uh, could you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you, Ian, thank you. I'd um, just like to uh, ask Manuela first. Um, she's built up a, an astonishing uh, record in, in these big race marathons. Um, and uh, she was unable to compete in Tokyo uh, to, to extend her unbeaten record. Um, how eager now is she to sort of get back uh, and, and uh, continue that incredible streak that she's had? So, so many different races, success, you know, in terms of the marathon majors and uh, marathons up and down the world. Um, you know, how keen are you to get back into that, uh, that, that winning uh, streak that you were, you were on before Tokyo? It's true. 2019 was such a busy, exciting um, year and it went from 100 to zero like one day to the other that was a bit uh, strange i had to get used to that to that time to you know to stay home and everything um but i'm so excited to to be back and i'm just um yeah i, I just want to enjoy it and and make the best of it has it been strange this year 
uh, not almost living out of a suitcase going from marathon to marathon. Often you race you know, even a week apart sometimes uh, with the marathon majors. Um, has that been a, a strange feeling not to, uh, or to being home more than you would normally? Yes, it's been totally different to last year, but um, you, you also get used to that. So um, when you don't always have to travel, traveling is not, is not always fun. It makes you tired and um, yeah. So it was, a, was good to, to just stay home and focus on training also. And I think training was really good. And I think I, I, um, it was actually good to have that extra time to really train after uh, winter break um, until the, the first uh, race. So I think that helped my shape too. And Shelley, within the race, there's the Abbott Marathons Majors sprint accumulation uh, in there as well. Is that something you'll have an eye on um, with a bit of a speed background as well? Yeah, I think it's, um, it's great to have, um, to, to mix things up a little bit. Um, like, I, I've, I've not done any of the sprint bonuses before, so, um, but I'm aware of them and um, I just have to remember what laps they are on. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's, good, it's good that they, uh, it, it makes the race a little bit more exciting, I think, to keep mixing it up a bit. Yeah, almost a race within a race. A race within a race. Yeah. Um, I think it's really exciting to see new initiatives coming in as well. It's going to be fun. Um, in terms of uh, you know your preparation, you know, you've raced well in Singapore. I think it was pre-Christmas, Shelley. Um, has training changed obviously massively from that because you know that was a big stepping stone back um, to really getting into shape. Yeah, it, it's it's um, like like I've not been back racing very long. Um, after having some time out after having uh, a baby. Um, he's three now. Uh, and it, like, I'm really pleased with the d decision to be able to come back and race. I'm really enjoying it. Um, and just want to see where it gets me. Um, like, I don't really have too much pressure on myself. Um, you know, I just wanted to come back, enjoy it, and see if I could get back to a good level and, and see what happens. Um, like, but like any other race, I've prepared the best that I can. Um, and it was good. Yeah, I had some good races last year to just to kind of step in stones um, to try and get better and better. Um, I enjoyed the Singapore one, um, and and that was kind of a bit of a turning point for me. And um, over the winter, like, did some really good training. But with the lockdown, actually, kind of reassess things a bit because you're always um, you're always focusing on that next race, um, and because we had no races. Since for this whole year, we kind of took a little bit of a step back and really tried to focus on our training and do training a little bit differently than what you would do where you're always focusing on that next thing. We were able to address a few things that we might not have had time to do if you were, you know, focused on that next race. So you try and make a, a good thing out, uh, out of a, a, a tricky situation, but. Um, it's been okay, and um, we'll see what what um, what gains or what um, improvements I've made on Sunday. But um, I'm really looking forward to it, and it's it's just good to be here. So, Manuela, you're racing the men as well. Um, have you got an idea how many of them you're going to be uh, chasing down, and uh, <laughs> are they going to be scared by uh, the speed that you'll be going around the circuit? No, I don't think so. I don't focus on the men's race. Um, uh, we raced on the same time, so I'm um, just going to focus on my race, and we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll we'll see how it feels to to do the laps, and and um, yeah, see what happens. What is exciting, Shelley? Obviously, you know, great coverage. The BBC, and you have a you know a standalone wheelchair race um, that's actually going to close down proceedings, being that it's the the third race with the elite women and the elite men, then yourselves. Um, how's it exciting that you know, there's going to be obviously a mass TV audience out there? watching you showcasing wheelchair athletics. Yeah, it's, it's great, isn't it? How good is that um, for them to be showing the, the, the race live? Um, like I know over the years, the coverage has got better and better, but never really had a focus on, you know, the, the wheelchair race, usually you kind of like in and out of all the different races that are going on. Um, so it is, it's, it's incredible. And it's really cool to be able to say to my mum, like, you know, you can watch on TV, <laughs> even though that you know people can't be here in in person watching. But you know people can can see what what these athletes and myself and what what everyone does and and how good they are. 
I think we've got uh, Ian Chapband again. Ian, are you there again for uh, another question? Um, yes, I'd just like to ask Shelley um, a little bit about um, David Weir. It's going to be his 21st uh, London Marathon. Um, and obviously, he's been an extraordinary ambassador for, for British sport. Can you, can you give us a, a little assessment of, of what he's like and, and what he's done for the sport um, over those 21 years? Yes. Um, well, David Way is, is a legend, isn't he? Um, you know, it, it, what, he's, what he's achieved over um, his whole career in, in wheelchair racing is amazing. Um, and he's, and I, I've witnessed firsthand like him training. He's an absolute beast. Um, and 21 London marathons is, is like, um, that's nearly half of what, what we've, what we're coming up, are we the 40th race? So it just shows how, um, ha that's amazing. Um, I don't even know how many I've done, but I, I don't think I've done half of, uh, half of what he's done. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's incredible to just be able to keep coming back and probably of those 20s, he's won quite a few of them. So um, I think that speaks for itself. And it must be kind of cool that you're going to share the same start line on Sunday. Yeah, it's very cool. I think Jacob Phillips. Jacob, we're going to test your microphone again. I have the question here in case it doesn't work. Hi there, thank you very much, James. Um, just to Manuela, uh, just to ask you, what what is it? What keeps you going now that you've won everything? You know, that you've won all the major titles and that world record. And off the back of Ian's question, uh, we've had an assessment of David Weir. Can we have an assessment of your Swiss counterpart, Ma Marcel Hugh? Because there'll be a rivalry between the two of them, the men's race. Well, I haven't achieved everything. <laughs> um, you know, um, in London 2012 and in Rio 2016, I, uh, for the Paralympic Games, I couldn't do, um, yeah, I couldn't show my best. And um, I still wanted to, to win uh, Paralympic medals. So, um, yeah, 2020 was supposed to be a big year for me, um, for everyone, I think. So, um, yeah, there's a lot, still a lot that I want to achieve. So it's never a problem to, to stay motivated. And the same... You know, question a bit like uh, what Shelley was asked like with Marcel, Marcel. Um, you know, to have two fantastic Swiss athletes. Um, how how you know, do you look up to each other and, and is, is it great to fly the, uh, the Swiss flag high um, at the London Marathon? It's great. It's, it's actually great. It's, um, it's great to win a, a major marathon, but it's even better if you know that the men's race was won by, uh, by your Swiss friend and, and um, teammate. So um, Marcel's a great athlete and it's, it's, it's great that we can represent Switzerland, such a, you know, tiny country. Um, makes me proud also. Um, but it also shows that we just have uh, great facilities in Notville with the Swiss Public uh, Center. Um, we have great facilities and, and that helps a lot. So tactics for Sunday. Um, the weather looks like it could be a little bit different at times. Um, are there different treads of um, wheels that you could potentially be using? Um, have you seen the circuit before, Shelley, yourself? Um, I've actually done the um, Westminster Mile uh, before. So I've been on the circuit and I know that's part of the circuit. Um, in terms of the weather, like, it does just play a part um like you have to make sure that you've got a, the right setup with your gloves especially if it's wet so it's just making the right call of you know is it going to rain or is it not <laughs> um but yeah so just making sure that you've got the the right the right equipment and if it does rain is visibility Manuela, an issue sometimes because i know as myself as a keen cyclist if you're behind someone when, uh, when the uh, spray is being splashed back. Does it make it difficult uh, at the speeds that you're traveling at if it does rain? It does affect us a lot, yeah. But the, the biggest problem is just the grip, that you lose the grip that you usually have. So you have to work with clister or sandpaper or, you know, there are million, millions of options. Um, it also affects when, when you are behind someone and you get all the water. So usually you want to draft, but when it's wet, you 
probably choose to, to be in front just to not getting that, that water. So um, me personally, I don't like it too much. I'm not a good um, athlete in, in, in rainy conditions. So um, let's hope for, for dry conditions. The forecast potentially gets better as the afternoon goes on, so, uh, so fingers crossed. So, Shelley, in the final few you know, days now, um, are you training very lightly? Is it a real taper into Sunday's race? Yeah, yeah. All, all your training's been done, really, so you just get into the, the start line in the, in the best health and shape as you can um, and just um, making sure that you're you're nice and loose and stuff. So, uh, yeah, it is. Amawella, you must have done a few laps already of the circuit here. Um, have you only got a little bit of training to go before Sunday now, or is it uh, mostly rest? We actually just got here yesterday, so um, I didn't have the chance yet to go outside. I would love to, but if it's the weather is too bad, um, I'm just going to wait until tomorrow and see. But um, I'll definitely um, sit in my chair before, before, on, before the race on Sunday. On Sunday, there's 45,000 people um, taking part um, virtually across the world, mm. 109 countries, I believe. Shelley, what's your message to those uh, athletes going through the 26 miles that uh, you'll both be going through on Sunday? Um, I, I think that's great. Like, you know, I know, I know it's been a, a tricky year for 2020. It's been a tricky year with... Um, covid and and everything but it's it's not stopping people um and and just get out there and and do and do it and um and do, and do your best and enjoy it so manuela what would be your advice to someone venturing out on their first marathon do, can you remember your first marathon i can <laughs> it was pouring down and cold and <laughs> but still great yeah it's 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 just it's something to enjoy it's um yeah, we still have the chance to get out and run and, and push a wheelchair and everything. So um, it still gives you that feeling of being part of a, like a bigger thing. And um, you still have that feeling of um, doing the same with, with a lot of people around the, uh, the world. So that's just great. You should enjoy it. Because there will be no crowds there on Sunday. We'll knowing that 45,000 people are going you know, the, the marathon distance, uh, will that help you mentally, motivate you uh, if it does get tough on one of the laps? Yeah, I guess if you think about it, um, how it connects people and how everyone is doing the same thing uh, at the same time, it's, it's great. Same for you, Shelley? Yeah, definitely. I think it, it um, you know, no, no matter who you are, what you, what you do, um, you know, I think even running and wheelchair racing, it, it kind of like uh, it unites everybody and, um, you know, that everyone's doing it for their own different reasons. Um, it's just it's just such a great event to be part of, um, whether it's virtually or, um, you know, in 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 real as well. Brilliant. Um, Ian Chadband, are you there, Ian, again? Uh, yes, just one one final thing for, for uh, Manuela. Um, obviously, you're going to be the, the overwhelming favourite for this race. Um, who do you see as your main competitors? Uh, who are the dangers? You know, it's a different situation because usually we get to see each other race um, so often. We usually do all the majors, so um, you usually know um, everybody's shape and, and where you stand, but we don't have that at the moment, so it's a total new situation. And you never know how everyone, everyone had uh, the chance to train and how everyone focused on training the past few months. Um, so it's actually, it's, it's, it's going to be a surprise. I don't know. So you, I try just to focus on myself. Because it's probably the longest period that you've gone without Ever. seeing anyone race, yeah? Mm -hmm. Fascinating. So I, I believe if there's no more questions from the media, if there's any more questions, then now's the time to speak up. I think that brings us to a close for our elite women wheelchair athletes uh, 
wishing them all the very best for what is the 40th race on Sunday at the 2020 Virgin Money London Marathon. Um, we will be cleaning and sanitising the stage before our elite uh, men's wheelchair present, uh, press conference. So again, a big thank you to Manuela, big thank you to Shelley. Uh, that closes our first part of our elite wheelchair press conference. But uh, stay by, stand by, and we'll be back with the elite men's. Thank you.
Good afternoon from the Athlete Biosecure Bubble here at the 2020 Virgin Money London Marathon. And welcome back to our last pre-race press conference before Sunday's big race. Today we welcome six-time Paralympic gold medalist making his 21st London Marathon appearance with many victories within that 21. Uh, also alongside him, uh, David Weir uh, of uh, Great Britain. Alongside him, uh, He's won every major city marathon, uh, including Berlin, New York, Chicago, Boston. From Switzerland, it's Marcel Hoog. So welcome, David. Thank welcome, you. Marcel. Uh, just to remind you, this is a socially distanced virtual press conference. Uh, everyone here is wearing, you can see, the bump technology. Uh, that's to ensure that they stay two meters apart. As you can also see, they're separated on the top table. Uh, before we begin, please can I mention a few housekeeping notes again to our media out there. So please submit your uh, questions through the Zoom chat, and I will call on the media then to ask your questions to David and to Marcel. Uh, please keep your camera on throughout and your microphone off. Please turn your microphone on when you're asking the question and turn it off after. So big thank you. So welcome again, David. Welcome, Marcel, to the 2020 Virgin Money London Marathon. Uh, David, you've been on the streets of London many times. Um, how happy are you to be back again? Yeah, I'm just lucky to, to have a race on, you know. Um, we was trained, obviously I was training solidly for the, for the race in April and then you know, when you get the phone call or the message to say everything's been cancelled and then you're building up to the next race hoping it's not going to be cancelled. So it's been it's been tough, you know, all the races being cancelled, but I'm just so thankful that the London Marathon has managed to put a race on for us this year. And Marcel, you've obviously prepared for every major city marathon. Is this the strangest preparation you've had for a marathon? Yeah, it was um, totally different this year um, to prepare for this marathon uh, because, as David said, it's, it was very difficult, difficult circumstances. Uh, so many um, races, competitions were cancelled due to uh, COVID-19 and so it was uh, really difficult for me but also for the coaches to, to plan um, yeah, all the training sessions. And so in the end, I was really, really lucky to hear that uh, London Marathon uh, tries to do to, to the marathon uh, a bit later this year, but uh, we still can, can do it. And yeah, I think uh, you, you can't imagine how excited I am to be here. I'm really um, happy, really thankful uh, that we can uh, make make this uh, competition, this marathon on Sunday, uh, that we are included uh, wheelchair races uh, in this uh, very special race this year. And yeah, it's, it was also very nice to see some familiar faces uh, yesterday again, after so long uh, time staying at home. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy to be here now. Thank you, Marcel. Now, David, I think you've recently moved or changed locations to Hastings. Yep. So um, how was your preparation or uh, you know, your lockdown training? Um, yeah, I, I moved there about a year ago uh, with my partner. Um, she lived down there in Hastings. So um, I was pretty fortunate that I did because um, Richmond Park was closed during lockdown. So that was my only training venue for, for London for me. So. I was very thankful that I had the opportunity to, I found some good courses and routes down in Hastings. Uh, it was different because it was a lot windier and hillier, but um, it's, it's been very good. Uh, I converted the, the garage into a, a training center pretty much with, um, you know, with rollers and, and weights and um, stuff like that. And plus, you know, I, the, the only thing I was missing was going up to my academy in Kingston, the Weir Archer Academy, on a Monday and Wednesday. So, you know, I felt for my younger athletes that were struggling at home. Um, we all gave them rollers to take home as well. Um, so we did a lot of Zoom training sessions, which, you know, wasn't the best for everyone, but it just perked everyone up to see everyone's face and, uh, you know, egg each other on in training. So, to be honest, I've had a pretty good uh, lockdown. Um, I got a new chair as well, um, that's made a massive difference. Uh, I got that in May, so I wouldn't have had it for, for the London Marathon in, in April. 
Um, but as soon as I got in it, it just made, uh, made me feel alive again. Um, I just felt like I was struggling with, the, with my old chair that I've had for a while. I think we've got a question from the media. I think, uh, is Micah there? Micah? Yeah, sorry, it's a question for Marcel. I just wonder what he thinks the chances are of a, a Swiss double in the wheelchair event. So Marcel, having been a previous champion of London, um, we have Manuela on the um, stage for the uh, previous press conference. What are the chances of a uh, male and female uh, win uh, on Sunday for Switzerland? Oh yeah, it's, it's my, uh, it, it means um, a lot. Uh, if we both could win the marathon, uh, it would be very, very special, I think, for, for both of us because, uh, yeah, to win here in, in London is, is always uh, something very special. And I guess uh, Manuela has a very good chance to win on Sunday. Uh, on my side, I'm not, not so sure. <laughs> it's, it's very difficult, but of course I try my best. So within the race, David, is the uh, Abbott's Marathon major accumulator, um, four different sprints. Um, yep. Have you got your uh, eye on a few of those sprints? Um, you know, when it, when it was brought in, I think last year or the year before, um, I always forgot about them. <laughs> so I was more focused on, on trying to win. So this time I've really, um, yeah, I've, I've practiced uh, a lot of sprints and interval training. Um, but that's just because I've had a lot more time to, to focus on, on one race. Um, so yeah, I will be looking out for them definitely on Sunday. So Ian Chabband, are you there, Ian? Yes, I just want to ask um, David uh, about um, his extraordinary longevity as an athlete. Um, you're 41 now, David. Um, are you, uh, can you look at your form? You've got a new chair. Can you say, um, that, you know, that you're as good as you've ever been, or, or do you do you feel like you're an athlete in decline? Do you think I am? I'll take it back to you. No, well, I, I personally, I, I think the last two years, um, I, I've struggled obviously with mental health and stuff like that, and it's been in the in, in you know in the public eye. Um, but truthfully, like the last year or so, I've probably been the best mentally that I've ever been. So. Um, I think that's a, a, a tick for me, um, for training-wise. Um, and leading into last year's marathon, um, I struggled with infections. I had uh, blood poisoning in January. Then I got another infection just before Boston. So my training was just, you know, in and out all the time. I had to rest and stuff like that. So it was always a rush to get, get fit for the last London marathon. Um, and that's probably why I struggled last year. Well, I know that's, you know, you can't you know, compete against Marcel and the, and the top guys and, and not do a full block of training and, and be healthy and fit. Um, but for me, the last, this year, I've, I've not been ill, I've not had infections and, and mentally I'm in a better place than I've ever been. And yes, I'm, I am 41, but for me, it, you know, it, it showed you in Chicago and New York. New York was probably a good race for me where I had a problem with my wheel and fixed it and, and um, caught up with Daniel and, and Marcel, which probably shocked them a little bit. So, um, but I feel like I'm in better shape than I was for, for New York. Uh, I just struggled with training last year. Um, I had a few problems with uh, my heart as well. They found out that I had a tiny hole at the top of it. So I had a few issues last year that I had to uh, try and sort out. and. Um, but the, the, the heart thing's not, not a problem. They said I've had it since birth and uh, I only got scanned a few years ago, uh, last year, just to, uh, to see what my heart was doing. And uh, they found it, but they said it's not a problem. So um, that, you know, a little bit of that got into my head off, after the marathon, um, trying to think, it, you know, I didn't want to put my heart under pressure all the time. So I, I threw my heart rate monitor away and just focused on, on, on training hard and, and how I felt, and uh, it's worked. So David, it's the 40th London Marathon on Sunday. You've done over half of them. Um, half my life. Do yeah. you have a particular favorite? Um, there's a few, actually. Um, obviously, the first one um, to win that. 
uh, was truly special. Uh, when I see the pictures now, I look like a little teenager, to be honest. Uh, it's quite strange to see. Uh, uh, and I think the year of 2012, um, that was a fantastic year for me. And I've got to say the, the last two, one after Rio and, and 2017, because of uh, my mental health issues at the time, um, and I still can't f figure out how I pulled them out of the bag, to be honest. So um, they stand out for me. Marcel, do you have a favourite London moment? Um, Just say when I won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, it was also uh, my first win. Um, to be honest, I'm, I'm not quite sure which, which year it was, but... Uh, I can imagine the moment when I crossed the finish line. Um, yeah, this feeling was just uh, really amazing. So David, the course on uh, Sunday is one you know well, having gone inside three minutes for the mile there. Yeah. Um, I was there that day, it was very impressive. Uh, you won't be traveling at that speed, I'm sure, until the last lap. I don't know. Uh, on, uh, Marcel's on be, Sunday. Uh, flying on um, how fast a course is it for, um, for is it, you know, a, a course you think you could push a very fast time on? Um, it depends, I think, because it's quite a challenge to keep going round and round the, the, the same course. Um, I think it's more of a mental side that probably will struggle with some of the athletes because um, it's quite hard to train in that environment as well and, and try and find a 2K loop where you train is it, quite difficult. Um, I've tried to, to mimic as much as I can for the race. Um, but everyone's in the same situation. So I just think it's going to be an interesting race. I keep thinking what scenario is going to happen, but it's quite hard to, to judge because there's no hills. Yes, we've got sprints, um, but if you break away, you're still going to see the pack behind you. So mentally, it's going to be tough if you try and break away and you can still see you know, a chasing pack trying to catch you up or, or you're going to try and catch them up. So it, yeah, it's, it's quite a challenging challenging situation I think. And Marcel, the, the same question to you, have you um, simulated training back in Switzerland um, that's similar to the, the course for Sunday? Uh, yes, I tried to find uh, a course which is uh, quite similar to this um, course on Sunday. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's a quite fast course I guess, but uh, it really depends on, uh, on the weather conditions, the, the wind, um, direction and of course uh, it's always uh, difficult when the, the course is flat to break away uh, so it might be also be a, a tactical race and as David said I think it will be a challenging uh, race because uh, to break away is very difficult and if you are away uh, you can see all the guys behind so uh, yeah it, it will be very interesting to see if it will be a, a fast or a technical race, or maybe a little bit of both. <laughs> um, can we go to Mike Rowbottom? Uh, yes, thanks. A, a question for Dave. Hi, Dave. Um, I just wanted to ask you if you could say a bit more about your, your new wheelchair. Is it, is it an AlphaFly wheelchair, then? Is it a what chair? I think he's a um, Nike Alpha Fly. It sounds like it's great. I just wonder what what's so good about it. Can you say? I, I think he's putting a, a spin on the your chair in My comparison chair. to the the shoe technology in um, oh, okay. in the no. elite men's elite women's uh, able body fields. It's just a uh, it's it's a, a, a chair made in in the US uh, an R1 by Carbon Bike. Um, it's an aluminium chair, so I've gone back to an aluminium chair. Um, just because I feel they're the best on the market at the moment for me, um, and they wanted to give me a chair as well, so it was <laughs> it was a no-win situation. So um, actually, it's it's been it's been great to get in it. Um, uh, I've had Draft as well, who's who used to make my chairs, so they're the ones that you know led me to to our ones and and uh, getting in their chairs. So it's not much different. Uh, it probably won't look any different to, to what you've seen before. Um, but for me, it just feels uh, amazing. 
And I think we can throw a question out to Cathal. Are you there, Cathal? Yep, I'm here. Hi, guys. Just wanted to ask, I'm sure like you've raced all over the world, but never in an environment quite like this. How is the time you've so far spent in the bubble? And what are some of the things that I guess are hardest to get your head around about how different this year's race is? So Marcel, you're inside a biosecure bubble, um, wearing bump technology, um, closed off from the world. Um, how different is this experience so far um, to, uh, to usually preparing for a marathon? Yeah, it's a totally uh, different uh, experience for me. I never had that before. Um, but uh, as we came here, we knew that there will be some uh, some things that we, we have to, to do and to be safe. And uh, I think this is a good way uh, to, to be safe. And uh, uh, for me, it feels, feels okay and um, I feel safe. So I think that's, that's fine. And David, yourself? Yeah, it's obviously a, a strange situation, but um, you know, it, we know the rules and the regulations so yeah it's, it's been pretty easy the only thing is you can't you know be too close to the athletes we're like a family some of us so um it's, it's been a bit strange when you have to talk to them two meters apart and stuff like that with the obviously with the new technology when it it goes crazy if you go too close to someone so um, it's, it's been fine to be honest um you know training wise as well I've had, i can train in my room and, and be away as well but a lot of the athletes will be in their rooms anyway even even in a, a, a major a normal situation so I'd pretty much be relaxing and chilling out in, in my room watching Netflix or something like that anyway. How different is it Marcel to you know, previous years where you know in a, in a six month period how many times would you normally race um, you know, before a major city marathon? Is this the longest you've gone um, without a marathon? Yeah definitely. Um, I guess in you know, my my career, I've never been uh, at home for so long time <laughs> during a year, uh, so it's it's really strange. Yeah, normally we have uh, maybe eight nine marathons a year. Uh, I was uh, in a lucky position that I had uh, Dubai marathon in January, uh, but that was the last one, and then um, I stayed home at um, three four uh, small competitions on a track in Switzerland, but really small ones. So now this is the first uh, international uh, competition now. And yeah, it's, it's really different. And I think we've got a question from Jacob. Jacob, are you there? Yeah, thank you, James. I just want to ask both the guys. We spoke in the women's press conference about how you haven't, the athletes haven't been able to see each other race unlike other seasons. We normally have an idea how everyone's getting on. I was wondering if you think that makes this the most open London marathon race ever. So David, do you follow people's form? Um, is this yeah, making I'll, it I'll, the I'll most open race? Yeah, I think so. But, you know, I've raced Marcel um, a lot of times and I've raced him all times of, of the year and he's always been the same. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've raced him in mid-January in Australia and he's been the same in, same in June. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how he does it, but um, yeah, obviously you look at results and see what people are doing. Um, and for me, I, I would obviously love to do a couple of races before a big major race. And obviously I haven't had that opportunity, so I've had to try and do it in training. Obviously it's totally different because you don't know where people are at or, you know, you can only do what you can do best. So, but I've had a good block of training, which which is, has helped a lot, and um, my numbers and and my timings and everything else seems to be the best that I've seen for a long time. So, um, I'm I'm quite confident on on Sunday that I could be there or thereabouts with with Marcel and whoever you know is it. You know, we've got some good athletes to race against. So, to be honest, I think it could be a sprinter's race. You know, you've got Brett Lakatos is is amazing on the track. Um, and it's a flat course, so you know he's very light and, and quick. So, yeah, you've got to watch out for everyone. Do you follow everyone, Marcel? The form? Are you usually um, someone that makes a lot of notes on uh, other athletes, or are you very focused just on yourself? Uh, yeah, for me it's the same as David said. It's uh, it's quite strange uh, not to see uh, other athletes for a long time. Um, of course, I try to to focus on my, my own. I mean, that's, that's the only thing I can do. I cannot, 
I have no influence to the performance of other athletes. So I always um, try to focus on my own also in, in normal th circumstances. Uh, but this year, I guess, uh, it makes it even more exciting that you don't know how others are doing. And yeah. <laughs> it's going to make it interesting on Sunday. Yeah. Uh, back to uh, Ian Chapman. Ian. Um, David, uh, you said last year on your 20th appearance that uh, uh, it's kind of explained exactly what the, the London Marathon means to you. Um, to win it again, if possible, would that be the, 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 the crowning uh, achievement? You've done so much in this world, but to, but to win yet another um, London Marathon and extend your record, would that, would that cap it all? Are you trying to retire me already? Um, yeah, obviously, not, London. Sorry? Not in the slightest. Okay. Uh, London Marathon for me, you know, has been part of my life since I started to, uh, my racing career, you know, as an eight year old winning the mini marathon. Not at eight, but starting it and then winning it in, in when I was a little bit older in my teens. But, um, you know, to do that many marathons. To be honest, it's the, the race that I've always loved and um, it was the race that I always watched on TV before I started. It was the only thing we used to see, you know, people in wheelchairs on TV. And um, so the London Marathon's been part of me all my life. So um, it would be amazing to win it again. It feels amazing every time I win it. So um, yes, it would be nice to crown a, a, a win on Sunday. But like I said, the competition's going to be tough. Um, there's a lot of guys that are, look like they're pushing well, um, but I'm not retiring yet, so um, I haven't put a date on it. I've, I've keep changing the date in my head, to be honest. So um, it, uh, it goes year by year. On Sunday, there's going to be 45,000 um, virtual uh, runners, you know, going through the 26.2 miles. Um, do you have a, a word of motivation? Um, for them or uh, encouragement, David? Yeah, um, you know, it's going to be tough. Obviously, it's going to be a different environment and stuff like that. Um, you know, if you've got your, your money in for your charities, that's amazing. You know, what, what the London Marathon and, and all the fun runners do for charities is, is truly amazing. You know, um, with my charity, the Weir Archer, you know, we've raised money over the years and, and other charities like Get Kids Going and stuff like that. So it just means a lot. Um, but just just enjoy it. I know it's different and it's strange, but, you know, we'll, we'll, I'll be thinking about everyone on, on Sunday and, and cheering you on as well. The same question to you, Marcel. There's 109 countries. I'm sure there's many uh, fellow Swiss uh, runners that are going to be uh, going the full marathon distance. Um, what, what's your uh, word of motivation when it gets tough in a marathon? Um, why should they and what would you say to them to keep pushing through to uh, finish the distance? Um, for me, it's, it's good to know that there are, there are 45,000 uh, runners uh, who are running the London Marathon virtually too and they are, that we are not the only only one who are hurting <laughs> so we are not alone and that's great great to know uh, I guess the most important thing is just to, en to enjoy uh, the marathon because uh, yeah it's a special experience uh, enjoy it until the end even it's hurting but um, you can make it Thank you. So we wish all of those 45,000 runners all the very best in the 40th uh, Virgin Money London Marathon. And unless we have any more questions from our media, um, I think that uh, will close our uh, final pre-race uh, press conference. A uh, big thank you to David. big thank you to Marcel. We wish you all the very best for Sunday's races. Um, and we will be back here on uh, Monday for the winner's press conference at 11 o'clock. So uh, thank you very much, David. Thank you Cheers. very much, Marcel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.